Well, no doubt the pictures here are spectacular. In some cases, they almost look like they're not real, like something out of a movie, but it, no, this it, is the real deal. It is so true, you know, but part of a major railroad line in eastern New Mexico is suspended in midair this morning. Uh, so this was a scary situation right here. A torrential deluge generated a surge of rushing water overnight Monday that completely washed out the earthen berm and roadbed beneath the Union Pacific main line at a spot between Tucumcari and Santa Rosa. Now video from Sky News 13 shows the flood not only washed away the dirt and stone, it also damaged a bridge. The many freight trains that normally run along this line from El Paso to Kansas City are being diverted now. The Union Pacific hopes to have the damage repaired within the next few days. And the heavy runoff is clogging culverts, a lot of them, including this one on U.S. 285 near Santa Fe. The State Department of Transportation sent us this picture right here. DOT crews were close to clearing the blockage, but then more heavy rain fell and clogged the culvert again. Of course, anytime we get rain like this, weather like this, we also get some pretty spectacular skies to go along with the storms. And yeah, thanks to you, we've got eyes all around the state. We'll show you some of this right now. Carl, the buzzman buzzard. Sent us this great picture of the clouds. He says, although he's no meteorologist, he's probably pretty close. He thinks these are cumulus clouds, and he calls them cap clouds. Great job, Carl. And check out this great shot of the Sandias. Whitney Westendorf sent this in. You can see a layer of pink there right on the top of the uh, mountain reflecting the sun. And in this picture, the pink clouds basically roll over most of the western side of the Sandias. Thanks, Tim K., for sending this in. Part of the clouds covering the mountain, you get the glowing pink there from basically what little sun managed to peek through. Now, if you capture some of the gorgeous skies here in New Mexico with these summer storms, we'd love to see pictures and video of it. Go to our website at krqe.com, click on the report it tab. You can check everything out there. You can also see the pictures that everybody else sent in, and I'll tell you, go on there right now. There are some incredible ones of the lightning. Well, 604, you know if you watch the news a lot or keep up with it, there are a lot of people getting hit by cars here in Albuquerque. In fact, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration ranks Albuquerque as the nation's third worst city for pedestrian fatalities. We fall behind Detroit and Oklahoma City, and many of those accidents can fall under driver inattentiveness or pedestrian error. But according to a report by the university and local transit experts, a third of those accidents also involve alcohol, either by the driver, the pedestrian, or both. They're walking and their attentiveness is not normal if, they're, if they've been drinking a lot. And so they aren't able to avoid a, a car, so they may walk right into the path of a car. The highest pedestrian crash rates in Albuquerque are mostly along Central. Atrisco and Central make the list of the worst spots, and so does Central and Sixth. There's also Central in Louisiana. And listen up, worst of all is Central in San Mateo. The city's municipal development department is looking at ways to make these spots safer. Well, you've probably heard Route 66 is a major part of Mayor Albert R.J. Berry's revitalization plans, but businesses along Albuquerque's piece of the Mother Road say vandals are destroying that area. The owner of the Olympia Cafe here across from UNM says they have not only spray painted his place, they've also etched his windows. That is damage that costs thousands of dollars to fix. The owner recently replaced the windows and once again they were etched again. Businesses up and down Central say the same thing is happening to them. The mayor's chief of staff says the Route 66 corridor and Knob Hill are priorities. There's even a graffiti removal team. But the people who have to deal with these attacks, the people who own the businesses say that is simply not enough. A national group wants New Mexico lawmakers to get rid of drug-free zones around schools. Right now, if you're caught dealing or possessing drugs in a drug-free zone, the max penalty is usually doubled. The idea is to keep drugs away from kids, but National Drug Advocacy Group Law Enforcement Against Prohibition says it hasn't been working and points to a nationwide survey of teens that shows teen drug use and access to drugs has stayed flat for 20 years. State lawmakers recently heard a proposal to get rid of drug-free school zones. In a lot of areas of criminal justice work, the bigger hammer uh, has not shown to be as effective as we would like. But when it comes to kids and drugs, we need to take every precaution possible. 
Prosecutors have run into some problems enforcing the drug-free school zone law because they have to prove that the driver or the dealer, I should say, the dealer in this case, knew that he or she was within a thousand feet of a school. Well, the new school year is fast approaching and in anticipation, hundreds of APS bus drivers are being trained on how to handle students, parents and the media. You have this many buses, you transport this many students, there are going to be glitches from time to time. And from time to time, those glitches end up making the news. You see, yesterday, APS held media training for bus drivers, emphasizing keeping all interaction with kids and parents professional. The district stressed to drivers quick and accurate reporting of incidents, even minor ones, to supervisors. When you put that cap on in the morning, you come in, you do have a routine. You are, you, you, sometimes you, you are put in stressful situations. About 40,000 students a day are shuttled by bus to and from schools in Albuquerque. There are around 450 contract bus drivers. A little bit of sad news here. The only milk producer in southern New Mexico will be producing milk no more after today. Nature's Dairy is closing its doors after being open for 35 years. Owners say they just cannot compete with larger companies anymore. In the last year, Nature's lost more than 30% of its sales. It says that local grocery stores that used to buy its milk started buying dairy products from the bigger retail chains now. It's getting tougher and tougher and tougher for a small business to compete in, in today's uh, economies with huge, huge grocery stores. That just kind of was the straw that broke the camel's back. About 25 people worked at the dairy. It's helping them find other jobs. And despite that, dairy still here in New Mexico. Did a little research this morning. Still a big deal. We are the ninth biggest dairy producing state and the fifth for cheese. Oh, I didn't know about the cheese part. Yeah, fifth biggest cheese producing state in the whole country. Get those cheese heads in Wisconsin. We got some good exactly. cheese here. And if you go to the state fair every year, they have a booth there, particularly from the dairy farmers. You get to sample a lot of New Mexico's cheese. Mm. It's good stuff.